Hey everyone, it's Alex The Real Mr. Robinson here. So this is kind of a weird format that I'm doing. I'm doing an audio only review for Cars 3. The reason is I'm currently at Santa Cruz for the weekend and I would rather give you really good audio rather than having to record through my webcam like I did back in the old days and have terrible video quality. And also it's kind of out of respect for the people that I'm staying with that I don't record the inside of their home. So this is just going to be a one-time thing where I do an audio review and for my next video you'll definitely be able to see my face. So without further ado, let's talk about Cars 3, which is the third film in the Pixar franchise that should have just been one movie and that's it. So in this movie, Lightning McQueen is still racing, but he's soon being overtaken by a new generation of racers. One of them is Jackson Storm, voiced by Army Hammer, and McQueen gets in a huge crash. Everyone thinks that he's done for, that he's retired, but he wants to go out and prove himself that he's not done yet. He is still the big racing champ, and he gets some help by a young trainer named Cruz Ramirez, voiced by Cristela Alonso, who actually admired McQueen back when she was a much younger car. So I've reviewed the Cars movies beforehand, so I don't need to go into too much detail about them. All I'll say is that Cars 3 was actually the first Cars movie I saw in the theater, because when the first Cars came out, I was in my anti-animation phase and refused to watch any animated movie. Then when the second one came out, I heard how bad it was that I just didn't feel like going to see it in the theater because I didn't want to be disappointed by Pixar for the first time. So with Cars 3, I just don't understand why they decided to make another one. Okay, I do understand because they sell a buttload of toys. But after Cars 2, you would have thought that Pixar went, okay, maybe no more Cars movies. And the fact that we get a Cars 3 before The Incredibles 2 is stupid. But how does the movie turn out in the end? Is it better than Cars 2? Yep. It is better than Cars 2, which really wasn't saying much because anything Pixar makes is better than Cars 2. It seems like with this movie, while definitely not one of Pixar's best, uh, they at least seem to learn their lesson from Cars 2. Uh, they've made the movie a little more sincere and heartfelt than Cars 2 was, which was this very generic spy movie, something that you do when you absolutely have no idea what to do with your franchise. So there is actually some genuine heart to this movie uh, involving McQueen and trying to prove that he's not out for the count, that he's still relevant. Uh, sort of like when you watch Rocky Balboa and Rocky tries to prove himself that he still matters. Sometimes it's hard to get into that story because Lightning McQueen is kind of unlikable. He's just still kind of very arrogant, full of himself, and often selfish. But by the end of the movie, he does manage to learn a valuable lesson. It does slightly make him grow as a character. So while Lightning McQueen is still one of the most boring Pixar characters ever created, there is a little bit of humanity and heart to what he goes through in this movie. I'd say even more than the first Cars, definitely more than in Cars 2, because Cars 2, he was pretty much a cameo. And speaking of Cars 2, Mater is barely in this movie. Once again, voiced by Larry the Cable Guy, but I think Pixar learned that, okay, let's not have a whole movie focused on Mater like we did with Cars 2. So they kind of pulled him back. You hardly see Mater in any of the promotional footage, and in this movie alone, he's in it less than even in the first Cars movie. So that much I admire. The animation is gorgeous, which is kind of a no-duh because it's a Pixar movie. You know it's going to look beautiful. And one thing that I really have to give credit to the Cars movies for is that as weird as this world is, as stupid as the mythology surrounding Cars is, the characters at the very least look like they belong in this super realistic looking world. It's not like with The Good Dinosaur where they tried to make this very beautiful, realistic landscape, and then all of a sudden you have these over-exaggerated designs for the dinosaurs. At least with Cars, they look like real cars if you just take away the eyes and the mouth. The racing scenes are also really well done, and that one scene where it's like this demolition derby that I talked about in my sneak peek review is actually pretty fun to watch and it definitely helps that there are no things poking me in the back and no mist effects like there were in the Bugs Land theater. So that was nice. And it does help lead into uh, some character development for the new character, Cruz Ramirez, who in my sneak peek review I said didn't seem like that interesting of a character. 
But watching that scene within context and the movie as a whole, she's actually one of the better characters in the movie, and she gets her own story arc that feeds into something that happens at the end of the movie that I honestly didn't see coming, even though thinking back, they foreshadowed what they did in the ending a lot. So I guess I do give Pixar props for doing a good job at slightly foreshadowing it without it becoming super obvious. Now for the bad. As heartfelt as this movie is, and it's probably just as heartfelt as the first Cars, which is not too much, I still didn't have any emotional attachment to this movie. Because Lightning McQueen, I just never found to be that interesting of a character. Cruz Ramirez was fun, but watching this movie and all the Cars movies, you can clearly tell that they're made for a much younger audience. And it's just not as mature. It doesn't take many chances, and it doesn't really pull your heartstrings in the way something like Finding Nemo or Inside Out would. And one of the key scenes that adds to me not really caring that much is the big crash that the first teaser was promoted around, where Lightning McQueen has this giant crash. You're kind of worried for him, but then it just cuts to four months later, and he's pretty much a hermit. He's perfectly fine. He's able to drive again. I almost said walk again. So there's no real emotional attachment when they just cut away to four months into the future after this horrible life-changing accident because it didn't really seem all that life-changing. And one thing that really irritated me throughout the whole movie is everyone keeps calling Lightning McQueen old when I actually don't think he's that old. Owen Wilson himself is just 48 years old. So it's kind of safe to assume that Lightning McQueen would be that age as well. So when did your late 40s count as being old? It's just like when you play Grand Theft Auto 5 and throughout the whole story mode, everyone refers to Michael DeSanta as fat. When you look at him and go, I don't think he's really that fat. And let this be the only time you'll ever see me compare a Grand Theft Auto game to a Pixar movie. But another issue with everyone calling Lightning McQueen old is that uh, you start to question more of this world, like, do cars age? How long do cars live for? Do they ever get dense? Do they ever rust when they get older? How are cars born? It's just one of those things, like with every Cars movie, where the more you question the science behind this world, the more it falls apart and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So in the end, this is just kind of a middle of the road, no pun intended, animated movie for me. For Pixar standards, it's very much a lesser Pixar movie. If I were to rank this movie, it would be above The Good Dinosaur, Cars, Monsters University, and Cars 2, uh, and below everything else. So it's a harmless movie. There's nothing offensive about it. It just feels very uninspired. Didn't seem like they had that many good ideas to go off of. So I would say watch at your own risk. It definitely is better than Cars 2, and I'd even argue that it might be slightly better than Cars 1, but still for Pixar, they just need to stop making Cars movies. I know they sell a lot of toys, but I would rather Pixar just continue to go back into doing original movies from here on out. And hopefully this year's Coco will get Pixar back on track of making masterpiece after masterpiece. And just like with every Pixar and Disney animated film, there is a short that plays beforehand. In this case, it's Lou, which is the story of this monster which is made out of several different items in a lost and found box at an elementary school and basically the movie focuses around the monster trying to stop this bully from stealing or even destroying all the other kids toys it's an interesting concept but much like with cars uh, it kind of makes you question how this monster comes into reality i mean it's cute and the monster definitely has a lot of facial expressions some of them made me laugh, but I feel like this is one of Pixar's lesser shorts. It doesn't seem too inventive, but it's not terrible. So if I were to give this an individual grade, it'd probably be good, but not great. For me, Pixar's last great animated short was Day and Night that was in front of Toy Story 3, but that's just my personal preference. And that's my review for Cars 3. By the time the next video goes up, I'll be back in my regular setting in LA, uh, so you'll be able to see my pretty or ugly face, depending on what your preference is. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on the movie, if and when you've seen it. And as always, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.